When working inside of Moto, uh, the one thing that you're going to be using a lot is the toolbar. Now, you don't necessarily need to, need to use the toolbar because you could use uh, the tools from here, geometry, you know, whatever here. Um, you could also perhaps create your own toolbars and, you know, way to access tools like I made inside of my own Pi menu. But for the most part, when you're learning Moto, it really is best to just keep this toolbar active. And of course, the reason for that is because um, if you're viewing any kind of tutorials, they will most likely be using the default Moto interface. And of course, the reason for that is because when Moto is installed by default, everybody has the same interface. So it's very easy to reach a common ground and introduce Moto to uh, new artists. So to begin, uh, well, I'm going to talk about the toolbar here. And um, basically, what I'm going to say first is I'm going to just go into the way this thing works. What you have right now is I have a menu of uh, tools. So I have a list of tools here that I can use. And of course, I, they are organized into different submenus. So I have a basic menu here that have uh, primitives, manipulators, uh, ways of aligning objects, snapping, and uh, common tools, and things like cut, copy, and paste. And at the same time, I have a different list, a different sublist for deform tools. I have duplication tools, uh, mesh edit. So these are general me uh, edit mesh tools and things like subdivide and booleans and stuff like that. And then I have specific tools based on uh, selection. So if I go into the vertex selection, if I make a vertex selection, and if you zoom in here, you'll notice that I have in fact selected vertices then these tools will only work on a vertex selection. If I go into edge, I can only use these tools on an edge selection. Or if I go into my polygon selection, I will, I will, these tools will only work if I have a polygon selection made. So again, these tools are specific to their mode. These tools, mesh edit tools, will work on regardless of what mode you're in. In fact, you don't even need to make a selection. If I choose the slice tool and I just slice through this object, you'll notice that I have in fact made a slice right through it and I didn't even make a selection. So that's the way that works. Now, the other thing I should mention is that uh, the way this works is if I left click on any one of these, and I just draw, for example, this cubic object. Uh, what I did is I left clicked on this item here or this tool. I left clicked and dragged inside of my viewport to add this cube. Now, there are other ways in which this works. And that is if I press and hold and you know what, let me just make all these items here invisible. And let me just go into here. So I have a new item here, um, you know, named cube for now. But basically, if I click on control on my keyboard, and I left click on if I basically what I have to do is I have to left or I have to click and hold control, and then I left click on my keyboard, what you'll notice is I have a cube. Let me just double click on this object and let me move it over. Of course, I'm in polygon selection mode. And let me control and left click on, uh, no, on this cone. And what, now what you'll notice is that I have a cone, but it's also in the same item layer. Let me double click and move that out of the way. If I control and left click on this torso here, what you'll notice is that it once again made it inside of this object or this item over here. Now, if I shift, if I click and hold shift and then I press left click on this cube, you'll notice that these objects are now transparent, or you see, we see the wireframe of this object. The reason of course being is that now you'll notice two cube tools. The reason it did that is because if I press and hold shift, it's actually making a new item instead of putting the uh, these primitives inside of another object. So every, if I click and hold shift and I press the teapot, for example, or this cone, torus plane, You'll notice if I scroll down in my item list, you'll notice that every single one of those was created as a new item. 
So whenever I press and hold shift, it creates a new item. It names that item to whatever it was, and it uh, creates it at a specific unit. Let me just delete that for now. So I'm just right clicking and deleting. And you know what, let me just delete these. But again, if I press and hold control, and I create all these, you'll notice that they are not disappearing, they are not being made invisible, because every single time I click and hold control and I click on any one of these, it, they, will, they will be made inside of that one item. At the same time, if you click and hold on any one of these uh, tools that have a tiny arrow on the bottom, what that means is that there's more than one tool hidden inside of here. So, so if I left click and hold on that button, you'll see that I also have a sphere available for me. So I can draw a sphere and like that. Or I can left click and hold and draw an ellipsoid. And more or less, they are the same. Um, there are slightly different uh, tools available in here, bulge, side, etc. The sphere doesn't have those options, so the way it works is, um, you know, they work slightly differently where I can, for example, make a globe, quad ball, and I can change the tessellation mode, etc. So there are subtle differences between the sphere and ellipsoid. The This tool here also has a solid sketch instead of a tube. And the pen also has a bunch of curve tools. And of course, if I left click and hold, the scale has a different way of working. And same thing with rotate, I can get a general rotate tool where I can rotate to any axis I want, or I can left click and hold and get an axis rotate where I am snapped to one axis. And of course, this is, as far as I know, it's locked to the work plane direction. So if I zoom out, you'll notice that my work plane is aligned, or my axis, if I left click right now, you'll notice that it's aligned to the work plane. Of course, I can pre place it wherever I want, of course, right now, because I'm more or less an automatic. But anyways, um, but yeah, so basically there's that. So. Any tool that I want to use, if I press and hold Shift, Control, or Alt, there I can get access to different kinds of tools. And that is mostly true in the Basic menu and the Duplicate menu, where if I press Alt, you get instance items of whatever tool. So if I use a regular clone, you'll notice that I've made four clones of the original. Let me just undo that and do that again. If I press Clone, you'll notice that the clone uh, properties tell me that the number of clones is four, so I have made four clones of the original object. But every single one of those clones was within one item. If I press and hold instance clone, and I do the same, you've noticed that there's one instance, but what if I change this number to four? Now there's four instance clones of that one object, and if I scroll down in my item, you'll notice that there is four instance clones of that one object. So that's all it is. If I press and hold Alt, I have a different access to tools. And again, pressing Shift, Control, or Alt does the same thing for my selection over here. So again, it just gives me access to more tools like that. So that's about all I really wanted to say in terms of the toolbar. Um, you know, again, I under Primitives, I have access to, uh, or under the Basic menu, I have access to the Primitives. I have access to the different manipulators. Uh, I have different kinds of uh, transforms. I have ways to realign my objects. So right now you notice that this object is not aligned to the center of here. What if I want to center selected on the X? So now what it does is it takes the bounding box of an object and it centers that bounding box to the center uh, axis. And of course I have snaps and precision. So if I had, for example, um, another clone of an object and I moved it here and what if I wanted to snap this object or what if I wanted to snap this vertex of this object 
or this object uh, vertex here down to here. What I could do is I could um, very simply just go to snaps and precision, drag snap rigid, and I could just move that object down to here and snap it. Of course, I could keep doing that by doing something like that. And again, it's very easy to snap. So I have tools like that. I have common use tools over here. And, uh, and again, I've basically mentioned everything about all the other tools. Duplicate, all it does is it duplicates polygons or objects. And again, I think I've mentioned everything I wanted to. So that's basically all it is for the toolbar. You have the tools, you have the tool properties right below. Um, you can move this wherever you want, but generally uh, in a default interface, you have you want to have these things side by side just because it's easier to keep track and just easier to mentally uh, remember you know, how things work. So if I change this on the left side, left side of the interface, if I change my tools, I have all my tool properties uh, right below. So that's it for that. Um, cheers.